We're here upon your invitation, Lord. And we thank you so much for your power that breaks every chain, that heals every disease, that changes hearts, Lord, that transforms, that moves mountains, that softens hard hearts. We thank you for that greater power that is released upon us of cho your children. Thank you so much, Lord, for your love upon us, Lord. Thank you so much for your anointing. Thank you for the healing. We are better because of you, Lord. Without you, Lord, we are nothing. But with you, Jesus, we are more than victorious. We are able to conquer each and every battle, each and every situation. Thank you for your grace. that helps us to preach the gospel. Thank you for your grace that pushes us to do things beyond human understanding. Thank you for the kingly anointing that supports us to sit in higher places because we have you, Lord. Thank you for the worship that draws us closer to you, Lord. And even this morning, we surrender. We invite you to take charge of this service, to take charge, oh Holy Spirit. Here we are, hearts prepared, minds alert, ready to listen from you, ready to take ready to receive what you have prepared for us. Take your place, O Holy Spirit. And may your glory shine in Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, worship team and the sound team. May God bless you. May he anoint you more to serve him. Welcome to church today. I hope you are all well. My name is Florence Isubuga and I'm so honored to minister to us this morning. It's our English service. As we all know, our first service was for Luganda. So this one is for English. We thank the Lord for what he's doing in this church. Amen? And we thank the Lord for what he's doing in each and every individual life. I believe even though some people don't come to give a testimony, God has done wonderful things. Amen? He has done great things and he's still doing them. So we give him all the glory and honor for the testimonies that we've had. And today, this morning, it's a season, a season of great exploits. And today, this morning, I'm going to talk about prayer. Prayer, an essential thing for a church. Prayer, an essential thing for you as an individual. Prayer, an essential thing for us as a corporate church to stand and make our supplications known to God. And as well, wait upon him to learn from him, to listen from him. Amen? So today I want to use my subject as the prayer shift from self-confidence to greater dependence on God. Hallelujah. From self-confidence to greater dependence on God. Only through prayer 
Praise the Lord. I know when I talk about prayer, some of us think we know these things. We know how to pray. We have prayed every day. We know. Me, I pray five times a day. I even pray. I wake up at 3 a.m. and I pray up to morning. It is okay. It is okay for you to continue praying. And it's okay if you're doing that. But this is what 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 12 says. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 12. For this reason, I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things. Though you know, amen, though you know, you know about prayer, you know how to pray, you have prayed, Peter is saying, and I, Florence, is telling you today, or I'm telling you today, that though you know, I will not be negligent to remind you of these things. Amen? That you may be established in the present truth. The more you know, the more you get established in the truth. Hallelujah. The more you receive, the more you get established. So we'll not be negligent to talk about prayer. Hallelujah. It is a shift that we all need to embrace. The truth is there are times when we feel like you don't want to pray. You have prayed enough. Like you have prayed and things don't seem to be working out or your expectations don't seem to be making sense or things are not coming out as expected. And you feel like, yeah, when it comes to prayer, let the others pray, but for me, me, I stopped praying. If God wants, let him do. If he doesn't want, let him The truth is we all get there. But I'm here to remind us that prayer aligns our spiritual person to God's presence. Amen? The more your life is, is prayerful, your spiritual person, your spiritual man is aligned to the presence of God every second, every minute every time a prayerful person can even just be heard from what comes out of their mouth the word of God fills your heart that when you get to speak you're praising God you're thanking God you have faith in the word of God so even the people around you feel the presence of God in your life. Amen? You're so scared. Not scared. You're so... The look is, is, is... I don't know how to describe it. But something I've remembered, by the way, as I was coming this morning to church, there's a song that came to my mind. A very old song. Very old. From Pastor Bugembe. It is a Luganda song that says Omubi wabanga Is it wabakulumbie? Stani wabakulumbie. Ngana manye gogo naga genze. Ngo sabie ouli lokoye. Kakana mukama ya ayamba. So that is the message. And when that song, when the last verse was done, I had a voice telling me that, please tell my people, let them be still. Let them mukakane. We have a powerful God. We have a victorious God. So whoever is feeling heavy today, that is your message. Kakana. Mukama yakolachi. Yayamba. So coming back to prayer. Prayer, it is a true recognition that success is not by mighty or power, but by the spirit of God. Amen? You get to believe that through prayer, my success is not because of my strength. It's not because of what I have put in. 
but it's because of the power of God. The mighty hand of God that is upon me that is able to do great and mighty things. Amen? Prayer is as simple as talking to God, listening to God. Many times we complicate it. We think for you to pray well, you need to pray in tongues. For a person that prays well, they need to pray for hours and hours and hours. Forgetting that even those simple, simple prayers that we pray as simple as, Lord, I need help. God listens to those prayers. Amen? So at times, they always announce here, on Friday we have a prayer altar. And you're thinking, what am I going to pray? Let those people pray. Let the intercessors go and pray. No. You don't need to be eloquent. You, not, you don't need to be a person that prays so many hours. You don't need to be a person that speaks in tongues. Just come to the throne of God and make your supplications known unto him. He is a faithful God. He answers all the prayers. Amen? Amen. It is getting ready for you to do the will of God. Many times we go in prayer and you just want to wait for that moment to make your list known unto God. All in all, from one up to 30, let me go to pray. Point number one, point number two, point number three, up to 20. And then the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with me in Jesus' name. I have prayed. Prayer is not only you making your request known to God, but it's also listening from God. Amen? You need to listen. In fact, the most important moment when you have isolated yourself in prayer, it is that time that God tells you something. But while we, we are in prayer, at times, we are so much taken up by our desires. We are so much taken up by the worries. We are so much taken up by the, you know, things that we want. And we forget to listen to the voice of God. You actually come out complaining. My, when I pray, my prayers are not heard. For me, when I pray, I think someone else needs to lay hands on me to pray for me. For me, when I pray, God doesn't give me answers. God speaks. You only have to listen. Praise the Lord. You only have to listen. And the best way to listen is for you to close your spiritual ears. You know, when we are with our friends, in our families, at the workplace, so many voices are speaking. You could be having a conflicting loyalty. You have two things and you need to, to decide. You don't know what direction to take. So many voices are coming. This person is telling you take this direction. Another person is telling you do this. Another one is telling you do this. You get confused. The best thing for you to do is to calm down. Get into prayer and listen. What is God telling you? Amen? Amen, church. It is prayer that is between victory and defeat. It is prayer that bridges that gap where you think there's a situation taking control. And there's victory on this other side. It is prayer that bridges the gap. Praise the Lord. Let's look at Exodus chapter 17. Exodus chapter 17 verse 8. Now Amalek came and fought with Israel in Rephidim. 
And Moses said to Joshua, choose us some men and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. Verse 10. So Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with the Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and her went up to the top of the hill. Verse 11. And so it was when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands became heavy. So they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat on it. And Aaron and Har supported his hands, one on one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. 13. So Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. It is prayer that was between defeat and victory. The Amalek, Amalek, Amalekites came to fight the children of Israel. And because Moses believed in the mighty God, he identified men. There was a lot of teamwork. He looked at his leaders. He met, told Joshua, go and lead the team to the battle. I'll go to the mountain and pray. Someone stood on the hill and raised up his hands to the mighty God. And the Bible says that each time he rose his hands up, they won the battle. When he puts his hand down, the Amalekites were defeating. So Aaron and her who were on the side, they had to hold his hands so that he continues in prayer. Praise the Lord. At times we need people on the side, on the left, on the side. To hold us up when we are praying. Sometimes you feel like you're growing weary. You feel like you're tired. You feel like you cannot do it anymore. But yet victory is just in your presence. Praise the Lord. That is why we need prayer partners. When you feel like you're tired. A friend comes in. Nagamba, no, we cannot. You know, we cannot get defeated. Let's rise up in prayer. Let's go fast. We need to stand. And this is what we need to do as a church. We should not leave prayer to only the intercessors. And we say, ah, there's a team of intercessors, the ladies. They will do the prayer. For us, we shall go and wait for victory. No, we will not settle for less. It is time for us to rise up as C3 Castle and we get hold of ourselves. One a group of people on the left, another team on the right. One person stands up or two people, three people go to the mountain. We all join in prayer and rise up against the enemy that is reigning in this place. Amen. There's no way we can preach the gospel in this place unless we have overcome the powers of darkness up to down. And that can only be done through prayer. Praise the Lord. But what is interesting is prayer starts from you before it goes to the church, before it goes to the corporate body. It starts with you. If your prayer life is sagging, if your prayer life is very unstable, Trust me, even when you join a group of people, you will cause chaos. Have you seen such people at school? You would see a person, you had your friendship, and when this other third party joins the friendship, everything is just, it goes a mess. Praise the Lord. So you don't need to accept to be that person. You're going to stand as an individual and rise up in prayer and say, you know what? Enough is enough. I don't need to get tired. Because the devil is not tired. Amen? I always hear people say that when a, a person goes to a witchcraft, uh, to a witch doctor, they always give them instructions. Okay? You go to, you know, the center, maybe in the town, at 3 a.m., naked, you know, carrying this, 
So many instructions and give, are given. But because you're very passionate about what you want to achieve, you will do it. Thank God those that do it are not here. Amen? So it is the same thing, the same passion, the same yearning, the same craving for prayer. It is the same thing that we need to have as individuals, as a church. Because we know the person that is fighting against us. The devil does not want this church to get full. No. He does not want you to break through. He does not want you to cross lines. He doesn't want you to succeed. He wants everything to be messed up. That is his plan. And because he knows the greatest tool that we have as Christians is prayer, he will always fight against it. And will make us prayerlessness. Or prayer, like that word. We'll become weak. We call for overnights. People don't come. You feel like you have a lot of sleep to make. You feel like you're tired. Let other people go. You feel like prayer is not, you know, everything. May that spirit of fatigue be broken in the name of Jesus. May that spirit of laziness be broken in the name of Jesus. May we take that bless, our place in prayer. Amen? Prayer releases the supernatural power in our life to overcome certain things. It is prayer that, you know, breaks down the yoke. It is prayer that takes away demons. It is prayer that leads to victory. And this is the thing. God does not want you to simply just tell him what you want him to do for you. But he wants to co-partner with you to do certain things. God wants to co-partner with you. He wants to work with you through you to do certain things. And he can only communicate to you through prayer. And you cannot have a very good prayer life minus a relationship with God. So it starts from having a relationship. Then you go to prayer. Then you read the word of God. The word of, the word of God is full in your heart. Your cup overflows that when you speak, you speak prophecy. When you speak, you speak life. When you speak, you create. When you speak, mountains move. When you lay hands on the sick, they are indeed healed. Amen? Prayer unlocks the keys of heaven and closes the gates of hell. Prayer doesn't need proof. It needs practice. We need to practice prayer every day. We need to pray every day. For you to become prayerful, it has to be a routine. You need to practice it. You don't need to have a special closet every day for you to pray. Even when you're in the toilet, even when you're on the move, even when you're in the office, even when you're in the kitchen, pray. Because it's a communication. God is communicating to you and you are communicating to, to him. It is a communication. Prayer needs practice. It is not just a matter of showing proof that I prayed. No. It is the weapon that we used to wage war against the gates of heaven. You get to your families and they tell you, by the way, this is what has been happening in your family. You discover that there is a, a lineage of things that are following your family. It is prayer that is going to separate you from that family. It is prayer that is going to break each and every bondage.
It is prayer that is going to turn around things. At times we don't even know solutions. We don't even know how it's going to work out. But God works amazingly through prayer because we are co-partnering with him in this. We communicate, Lord, this is what we need. Lord, we need your intervention in this matter. It is through prayer that we move from the self-confidence where you think like you can do things on your own, where you think like it's through your effort that things can actually change to a greater dependence on God. I am telling you, it is not easy, but there should be a shift right now. It is not easy. At times you want things, you want to first see things so that you believe you want to first see things work out and then you can believe and say, okay, now it's going to work out. You may not be able to see the things. Just pray and believe God. And depend, put your dependence on that mighty God that changes things, that does wonders through prayer. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. It is through prayer that we rise our needs above the knees. Amen? Prayer rises our needs beyond the, need, the knees. It is through prayer that we get the boldness Ephesians chapter 6 verse 19 the, 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 the disciples they went in prayer and the Bible says through prayer they got boldness and confidence to preach the gospel when we pray we get the boldness to actually reach out to individuals reach out to nations reach out to certain people some of us can preach the gospel, but because you lack the boldness, you're like, how do I even dare start? How do I even approach this person? How do I even tell them? You fear rejection. You fear so many questions that they'll ask you. Through prayer, you can get the boldness to preach the gospel, just like the disciples. Amen. Amen. I am telling you, your last miracle is as close as your prayer. Or your next miracle is as close as your prayer. That thing that you want, that church that we need to see, the visions that we have, the billionaire vision, that vision is as close as our next prayer. If we don't pray, there will not be a shift in things. If we don't stand as a church to pray, things will not happen. Things will not shift. I was telling people in the first service, I gave an example of, of Mommy Karen, the mother to Mrs. Karen. She was here and she was giving a testimony that that time, we used to come here every morning, every 6 a.m. on Wednesday to pray. We came every day. From her communication, it was consistent. They used to come. Little did she know that her prayer by then is the testimony of today. So what are you doing about it? What is your prayer life telling you right now? Is this showing you a testimony of tomorrow? What are you going to thank God about if you have not dedicated yourself today in prayer? Some battles are not going to be won that time. You have to start fighting them today for you to achieve victory tomorrow. For us to get where we are here as a church, there are prayers that were prayed 19 years ago. And we are seeing the victories today. 
pastor is giving a testimony, we have a person who is a pilot. Oh my God. Can you imagine that day and it's being put on record. So what is that aeroplane? Boeing? Boeing? That one. And it is flying. And one of us here is flying that aeroplane. That is a testimony for C3 Castle. It is not a prayer that has started today or that was prayed today or yesterday. It is a prayer that has been on since the church started. Where our pastors are praying and declaring into our lives that we shall be great. We shall do great things. The people of this church shall do great exploits. They shall be mighty. You know, they shall be in positions. They... It is what we are saying today. So prayer bears fruits. Do you need to see fruits? Do you need to see fruits in your life? Pray. Start praying. It doesn't matter whether you had lost a position of prayer. It doesn't matter where you feel, whether you, you felt like you are giving up. Start now. In prayer. Mothers who are here can witness you start declaring and laying hands on your children even when they are young. I speak a blessing upon your children. You shall be heads, not tails. You shall lead. You know, you shall be great men. You shall be great ladies. You know, you shall be ministers of God. We speak a blessing upon our children. So when they happen, indeed it is prayer that planted that seed. If you do not have prayer, or if you don't pray, it means your soil is empty. There's nothing you're planting. So if you want to cultivate, if you want to get a fruit after some time, then you need to sow a seed in the ground, and that seed is prayer. Hallelujah. We need to move from self-confidence to a greater dependence on God and have a prayer shift. What do we need to do as a church? We need to raise our desire. Our desire has gone low. We are desiring other things. We are pursuing other things. We are so focused on other businesses. We are pursuing this and this. But we have lost the desire for prayer. The desire for the relationship with God. The desire to be close to God. The desire to be intimate with God. The desire to see our church grow. The desire for our friends, our brothers and sisters whose souls are getting lost. We need to have a shift in terms of that yearning. That yearning. I've ever seen a hen when it's going to lay eggs. It is so rattled. It is moving around. It is so restless. We need to be restless in prayer. For us to win big things, we need to be restless in prayer. Every moment in prayer. Every moment praying to God. Believe in God, not only for your life, for the life of the church, for the life of your brothers, for the life of your sisters, for the life of your family. Some of us have given up on our families. You're the only person born again in your family and you're not even caring about the people who are not yet saved. Rise up in prayer and pray for them. May there be a shift. It is possible. We've seen families that started with one person and then at the end of the day, the entire family is, low, is, is saved. It is possible through prayer. Amen? We need to rise up. David says in Psalms chapter 42, verse 1 up to 2, As the deep panthers for water, so my soul longs for you. We need to have that yearning for the spirit of the Lord to rest in our hearts. So that we pray. So that we do the will of God. So that we walk in faith and believe. Secondly, we need to be persistent. 
We need to be persistent. It's never going to be easy. You're going to start and fall. You're going to start and stop. You're going to start. People will make you lose the energy. But you need to be persistent. We have so many examples in the Bible. Look at Sarah. Look at Hannah. How they prayed and believed God. They were persistent in prayer. And indeed, prayer changed things. I am telling you today, if you're also persistent, you're going to see things happen. Don't give up. The truth is the trials are too many. The challenges are too many. At times we compare ourselves to other people and you feel like your life should be like the life of the rest. No. Wait upon the Lord. He will make things beautiful in his time. Be patient in prayer. Kale, it is better for you to wait in prayer than wait without nothing. Because waiting without nothing is giving up. You say, I've given up. There's nothing much I can do. But when we wait in prayer, the grace is sufficient to hold you until that day when what you're praying for is fulfilled. The third thing, let faith be faith. We all know that faith is a substance of things that are hoped for. Things that you don't believe. Things that you don't even know how they're going to come. Pastor, he's here talking about the billionaires and they're thinking, who are those billionaires? Can people become billionaires? And they're thinking, me? Me? To become a billionaire? Now that is not faith. Faith has to be faith. Believe and believe and believe. Even when it's unbelievable, believe. I was telling my friend Vicky that I believe God that I'm going to do my masters not in Uganda. <laughs> I don't know how but I have to do it not in Uganda. I have faith. I don't know how but it's going to happen and I will testify on this pulpit. We have faith that we're going to build that church. We have faith that we are buying this land. We have faith that we are expanding. How? We don't know. But we have faith in the greater God. So let faith be faith. Not have faith. Sometimes you believe. Sometimes when you go back, you're like, but is it possible? Can it happen? You know, you have so many questions. Do not allow the devil to actually corrupt your mind. Believe and have faith. The God that did it for everyone in the Bible. Mighty men that testify. Testimony after testimony. He is our same God. He is our father. He's so loving. He knows you by name. You're not so different from these people. He can still do for you. He can still do for us as a church. What we just need to do is to rise up again and pray. Hallelujah. And lastly, let's learn to listen to God. Let's learn to listen. At times we go before God and once you've laid down all your points, you're quickly rushing to actually get out of that place. You end up missing on the revelation. Let's learn to listen to, to, to God. Like I mentioned, so many voices are speaking. Listen, I mean, learn to discern spirits. Learn to discern. Be obedient. If God tells you, in as much as you need a job, and the job has come, the dream job, listen. If he says, do not go for that job, do not go. Amen? It is my humble prayer today as a church, as we, up, as we stand up on our feet. It is my humble prayer today that as a church, 
Let there be a shift in prayer. Let us rise up as the corporate body of Christ. Let us get energized again. Pastors announced that we are going to be here every Friday to pray. Do not give any excuse. Just come. Just come. You don't know whether God is going to use you to speak a word into someone's life. You don't know whether the next answer that you all needed is going to be given to you during that time when you're praying. The same way we don't give excuses at work. We should dedicate ourselves for God to use us, for God to speak to us, for God to do mighty things through prayer. Is there anyone that needs a miracle? Can I see those, ones, those that need a miracle right now? Your miracle is just next to you. Just pray. Lift up those hands and we pray. Father, Lord, I dedicate your children into your hands, King of glory. What you have given me, Lord, I have shared. I welcome you, Holy Spirit, to settle each and every person's heart, King of glory. You know where to convict. You know where to correct. You know where to energize. You know where to rise, to raise up. It is my humble prayer that you may meet each and every person depending on their state, depending on their need, depending on everything, Lord. You're calling us up to right now, King of glory, to rise up in prayer. The Bible says that we, we lack what we pray for because we don't know how to pray. We come before you, our Father. May you teach us how to pray. If we are praying wrongly, Lord, may you correct us. May you help us to get prayer partners that work together with us to rise up in prayer. This village needs to be changed and you're going to use me and my friend here for us to change this area through prayer. Our brothers, our families, our sisters, our friends need to get saved and you're going to use us to preach to them through prayer. We've read of you, Lord. You did great and mighty things. You fought battles when your people prayed. And we come before you today saying, we are here, Lord. We are rising up to pray as Christian City Church Kazo. We are rising up to today to pray as individuals. In the name of Jesus, may miracles happen. May nature, nations change. May transformation happen in Jesus' name. May we do great and mighty things in Jesus' name. May we lay hands on the sick and they be healed. Because of your power and anointing, Lord. May you fill our cups to overflow. May you fill us with your Holy Spirit each day. May we walk with a revelation, King of glory. May we go back to your word, King of glory. May we read it. May we walk it. May we be it in Jesus' name. Give us the power, King of glory. To rise against the enemy and his weapons through prayer. May you work with us, O King of glory, to fulfill your purpose and callings upon our lives, upon our families, upon our area in Kazo, in Mwaise, through prayer. Lord, we surrender, surrender ourselves to you, Jesus. Fill us. Fill our cups to overflow again, Lord. That we may do great and mighty things. Just like how you did Jesus. Your people are ready Lord. They are ready to receive from you. Use them Lord. Lord. Use them. Use them. Everyone that says yes. May they receive it. 
In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed and believe. Thank you so much. I declare a blessed week. May we go and thrive in prayer. May you help someone else rise again in prayer. Reach out to someone that you see they have become weak. Pray with them. Pray with a sister. Pray with a brethren. Send prayers. Use your WhatsApp. Record a prayer. Send it to someone. You don't know what it can do to that person. May the good Lord bless you.